Hi everybody, um, this is my first test of uh, my YouTube live streaming. I can see myself but I'm slightly out but hopefully you can hear me through this. Um, tell me if you're there, uh, send me a, a wave or a heart or whatever but I'll just carry on as normal. This is a test. Um, I'm hoping to run my art chats on YouTube from next Thursday. I've been running them on Facebook and have been having a few problems, so it would be much easier if I could run them via YouTube. Um, so today I'm going to show you quickly how to restretch an old canvas. So I've got an old canvas here, um, as you can see. Uh, it's been in storage for a while. It's dirty. I don't like the picture. It was done as a present years ago. 2011 this was and it was a spare that was left over. So I've got hundreds of little canvases like this that I've used over the years. Um, and I keep them all because unless they're warped in any way, you can restretch them. So we're going to restretch this one. So the first thing to do, obviously, is to remove the canvas. Um, so I'm going to lower my, uh, my camera now, and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing, hopefully. So the first thing to do, I just want to just wait one second, just so I can see if you can actually see the canvas on my tabletop here. So just give it a sec. So yeah, you can see a bit of it, but I'm just going to lower it a bit more. Hopefully that'll work. Um, we're also going to talk through some tools. Now to remove the staples on the back of this canvas, um, I've got a staple remover here. Now this is a, a very specific tool. Um, it's an upholstery tool and um, it's really the best tool for getting staples out. Um, you can use other things. You could use um, a, a pair of scissors or even one of those staple grippy things. Um, but this is the best tool for the job. And you can see it's got a couple of prongs underneath here. Um, and you literally just put the prong down. And I'm just going to stand up so, so I can get a little bit of welly underneath. You put one of the prongs underneath the staple and then you just prise it out like that and so on. So I've got two there, just prise it out. Be careful of your eyes when you're doing this so that they don't sort of ping, ping into the eyes. Sorry, I've got a squeaky chair. So you can see I've removed all the staples from round the back here. And I'm just going to take off the canvas. And you can see that the frame is still in reasonable nick. There is a front and a back to the canvas. You can see where the staples have gone in. The front generally has a sort of raised section here to raise the canvas off, off the frame itself. Not always, though. And you can do what you want with that. I don't know. Um, you could use it for scrap bits and stuff. Testing paint on. Things like that. So... I have already pre-cut a piece of canvas. Now, this is quite thin. Um, you can use any material to stretch onto a canvas stretcher. It doesn't have to be canvas. It could be silk, it could be nylon, it could be wool. You can paint on anything. Obviously, everyone has its challenges. Um, but you can stretch anything you want. But the, the most traditional one to use is a canvas. You can get different grades of canvas. Like I said, this is a, a very lightweight. People use very thick, they use hessian. So ask where you buy your canvas, what grade it is, and feel it to see if it's thick enough for you. Um, 
I get my canvas just from material shops off of markets and things like that. You can order it online. You can also get canvas ready primed in rolls from art shops. You can also buy normal canvas from, in rolls from art shops. So turn your frame upside down, put your canvas down. Some people iron their canvas before they put it on, but I don't. Um, I'm going to how much of this you can see. You can see my body. Right, okay. So the canvas is in the centre of your cloth. And you're just going to, now you've cut your canvas with an inch around the edges. You don't need it much more than that. You just need something so that you can actually grip onto um, and fold under like so. All right, so here I've got a staple gun. You can get these anywhere, b &Q, art shops, da da da. Um, you can get them with electric cables attached to them, power assisted, all sorts of flashy things. Um, and you can get them cheap, really cheap. Um, but they're a great tool to have in your collection. So in this staple gun, I have six millimeter staples. You can buy these again from any DIY shop, art shop, etc, etc. Okay, so starting from the middle of one side, just pull the canvas over and you're going to hold it in place under the staple. So press the staple down and the staple. Make sure you get it into the wood and through the canvas and then you're going to go to the opposite side opposite side pull tight and evenly if you can pull it tight and evenly pull it as tight as you can over the edge and staple and then turn your canvas you can go to the middle of the other sides so onto the middle one Pull it tight, staple over, around to the other side, pull it tight, and staple. And you're going to keep going like that, so working opposite. So go to the side of one of the staples that you put in first, and then go across to the other side. to the other side about an inch half inch to an inch away from the other staple pull and then go to the opposite side and just keep going like that working in opposites so now we're back to the start we've got two staples in each one so this was the middle one and you've got one to the this side so you're going to go to the other side now Pull that tight. You'll feel it getting tighter as you go along. Go to the opposite. Pull it tight. Take it. Go to the other side. Go to the opposite side. The, up, the other side of the staple that you originally put in. Go across. Opposite. So I'm going to go here now. do this quickly but you can watch it in slow motion if you want to and when you get to the corners I'll show you what to do now this is a square canvas so it's reasonably easy to do if you're working with a rectangular canvas then what you need to do is pull in along until you've done the sides and then da da. And then you need to very carefully just do the extra bits on the ends. But working in opposite still and evenly as possible. So now when we come to the corner, I'm just going to put an extra staple just in this corner here. And then I'm going to fold. So you've got a corner like this. You can just carefully just fold 
and then into that like that. Pull it tight, hold it still and staple. You'll find that it takes a little bit of practice and because, but because you've got your um, tuck staple remover, this one, if you make a mistake then you can um, pull them out and start again. So I've put the little fold there, you can see on that corner there's nothing, the fold is evident here, so I'm going to put the same fold on this side. So I'm going to fold, just tuck the cloth in, fold, and then just pull this down like that. You can see where you need to sort of fold the edges in and where you need to pull up tight. Just make a fair bit of wrapping presents, you'll be good at this. So into that corner, just put an extra staple there. And then again, I'm going to do, so I've done that side, so I'm going to put the folds on this side so that we're all even. So in to this again. So fold it around the corner and then pull tight like that. Can you see that? Last corner, put the sta staple in there just to pull that bit tight and then look at where you folded. I put a fold there. And then into the corner there. There we go. So that's the back. I hope you can see that. I'm just going to straighten this up a little. So that's the back. And then when you turn it round, you can see if it's tight enough. So you can see that that's the front. And you see it's nice and neat around the corners. Um, you can trim these little bits off and you can trim any excess uh, cloth off there just to neaten it up or you can tuck it in and staple it inside there and just make sure it's nice and neat on the front and as tight as it possibly can be. If it's not tight, undo it again and re-stretch it. Okay, you can see and hear that that's reasonably tight. Now, people have asked me in the past if I can find some. Um, when you buy a new canvas, uh, you often get these little things here. So these are canvas stretchers. So this is for if your canvas, when you buy it, if, it, if it's too loose for you. Some people like working on loose canvas, others don't. So you pop these in like this. So that one goes in there. Um, so you ha should have eight pieces per canvas and that one goes in there like that and you knock them in with a hammer I haven't got a hammer with me at the moment but you just sort of tap them in nice and nice and tight what that does is it pushes the frame out either direction and stretches it so it's even tighter and you can do this before or after um, painting the canvas so sometimes when you've got canvas that's been left in storage and it's loosened a bit you can pop those in and retighten the canvases so they go in those eight corners there and tighten up um, but for this one at the moment this is nice and tight well it's as tight as I like it to be anyway um, so that's that's it now priming you can use normal acrylic paint I use acrylic paint mixed with a little bit of PVA um, you can use um, DIY paint mixed with a little bit of PVA or you can buy gesso. There's various ways of priming it. Other artists do a variety of things to prime. You can mix your own primers using uh, chalk and all sorts of other things. So look online and that will give you a bit more information as to how and, uh, and what to prime your canvas with according to what you're going to use, which is the thing. You can get primers now to put on canvas that um, accept watercolour, 
which is really useful. Um, and obviously priming was mainly used um, for oil painting traditionally. So um, there you go. Don't throw your canvases away and experiment with different types of materials. It's really interesting. I'll just show you a, pa a painting that I've done. Um, this was an, an experiment that I've been doing because I've been looking at reusing upholstery fabric. Um, so this is padded with um, foam. So I stretched, I put some foam over the canvas. Um, well, actually, this time I used a bit of MDF. So I stretched the foam over the top of the MDF and then I stretched the canvas on top of the foam. So there you have like almost like a quilted surface to work on. That's what I'm experimenting with at the moment. So enjoy. Have a go. Let me know how you get on. And thanks for watching. Oh, subscribe to my channel and um, leave me any comments if you've got any questions ask and um yeah keep in touch hope you enjoy it